we are once again addressing ourselves to the nefarious deeds of the Swede. Are conservatives evil the importance of understanding your opposition? Let us begin. It is incredibly difficult for you to, to form your belief on a set of people more from what you're told about them in the media than what you see in your everyday interactions with them. Characterizing... What on earth did he just say? It, I, I couldn't catch it that. It is incredibly difficult for you to, to form your belief on a set of people more from what you're told about them in the media than what you see in your everyday interactions with them. Characterizing... It is more difficult to form your belief about a group of people from the media than on your everyday interactions with them. Okay. Your opposition's belief and belief system is something that will be done to some extent in any political movement ever. I'm not delusional. But you need to be very, very careful how you do it and how you talk about your political opposition if you care about potentially changing their mind and getting them over to your side, which I may add, if you are living in a democracy, which most people here are, I would imagine, I don't know if anyone's watching me from North Korea right now, in which case, hello, my North Korean viewers. Um, but if you're living in a democracy, you should have an interest to at least get the majority of the people on board to be sympathetic towards your position and to try to move them over if you sincerely believe in the values that you hold, right? Yeah, but that uh, doesn't actually involve at all being generous towards your opposition. Sometimes you actually have to squeeze them out via the outside. This is no, like, it, it just it just doesn't work practically. Um, it also assumes that your interlocutor is actually acting in good faith, but people can engage in argumentation um, for the sake not of actually convincing their interlocutors or of like taking place in the marketplace of ideas or whatever, um, but just to create that point of contact to forward their position via extrinsic means to that conversation itself. Case in point, um, I don't think Des uh, Fuentes has a hope in hell of convincing um, destiny of, of his positions generally, but he will continue to have conversations with him because it is expedient uh, to his movement nonetheless because this creates points of contact with vast a, a vast audience that Fuentes otherwise can't tap into on a medium he's been banned from. But it's very important the way that you characterize their positions when you're talking to them. I see a lot of people do this, and most often it's 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 kind of it, it's young people all the time. But um, it, it can happen by anybody that when they characterize their opposition, video volume should be slight. I don't know what to tell you. His his volume is quiet. My my volume is maxed. Since positions, they are completely unable to separate. Um, what Here, let me let me try and boost it a little bit. Oh, this is frustrating. Let's try this. Outcomes of that policy will be from their intentions. What do I mean by this? Hang on. Will be completely unable to separate um, what you believe the outcomes of that policy will oh, be. God damn it. And when they characterize their opposition's positions, they are completely unable to separate um, what you believe the outcomes of that policy will be from their intentions. What do I mean by this? Well, for example, if we're talking about something like contraception, if you are like a more liberal leaning person, more left leaning person, like I am, and you think about contraception, you're like, okay, contraception is pretty important because contraception Number one, saves us a lot of money socially, like in the long term, uh, when it comes to things like, uh, you know, child care for accidents and stuff like that going on. It gives people more freedom in being able to, you know, go about and conduct sexual acts in a way that doesn't have the risks of inducing a pregnancy to the same extent. And therefore, people can get the enjoyment from that. And it basically gives people more reproductive control and more autonomy about their reproductive systems. And uh, contraceptives can also be a good way for especially, you know, women 
once again, very dependent on who they are and what breath control we're talking about and from person to per person to get, you know, uh, yeah, to take control over things like, for example, like the menstrual cycle and stuff like that. It might help a few women with that. It might also make it worse, but it might also help. Like there, there are all these different reasons for why we might be in favor of contraceptives and why that might be good. And therefore, we believe that uh, if you were to be against contraception, if I were to be against contraception, knowing that, I would be a person that would probably want people to be worse off, right? For me, with my current understanding of contraceptives, for me to still be against them, I would need to be a bad person. And a lot of people will take that. And then when they look at another person who might be against uh, contraceptives, they will ascribe your reasoning for what you would be if you were, didn't believe in contraceptives and paste that onto them. Hey, Rose, I'm going to, here's a bit of a black pill for you, okay? You are not smarter than the average conservative. What you are is more honest with specifically respect to the relevant data to this issue. They are capable of grasping this. The reason why they don't is because they have an intense dislike for a cluster of things in which contraception is grouped. It's it's a whole bunch of stuff relating to uh, relating to sex and relating to biology and relating to technology, all these together, that makes them intensely uncomfortable. They understand the intrinsic benefits of being able to control when and how you reproduce. They understand this. I grew up in a conservative household. I went to a religious school growing up. They understand this. The dumbest ones understand this. They, they have to make the same considerations. They also want to have sex. They also want to do all this stuff. They also know about like the cost of doing so. If you, if you don't have these, these, these technological things that you can make use of to prevent profoundly inconvenient or dangerous outcomes. They're not necessarily cackling to themselves, wishing evil on other people. A lot of them are, by the way. Um, it doesn't matter. They're nonetheless being grossly dishonest for reasons they are actually quite aware of. It's just continuing to be so is therapeutic to that whole area of discomfort. And that's a really big issue. Because if you talk to them and you're like, oh, you are against contraception, you must be evil. You must hate people having autonomy. You must be in favor of really like draconian, you know, things and regulations and values on on sex or relationships and stuff like that. Uh, when in reality, no, they are, they are, we are. I was very much so. Um, this stuff is known. I'm I'm sorry. The way that they arrived at that position wasn't the same way that you did. The way that they view contraception is probably in a different way. So, for instance. Um, you might have a person who is really a big fan of traditional family values. They love family values. They think they're very important. And they think that the nuclear family... No, they don't. They really don't. That's why a lot of these people are grossly abusive to uh, politically engaged minors, to politically engaged women, um, to the families of people who are associated with these people. They, they don't. Family values is, is its amorphous sphere that is cosmically opposed to this other sphere in which society and technology intervene on human relationships in any way that they, they find icky, um, especially around sex. But this is, this is known. This is known. A lot of these people, their, their family lives are, are, are a mess because they're just they're spiteful and frantic and awful to each other. This is extraordinarily naive. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, Rose, I don't know who told you you're a super genius, but you are not that much smarter than these people that you can just impute all of their behavior to ignorance. It's not. Family is the best way to assure that people are happy and living healthy lives and that you have a good social unit from which we can build upwards from. And they believe that contraception... This isn't a terminally liberal take. You can be a liberal and... and, and... Like you, you can be a conscious liberal and be aware of the actual stakes. Like liberalism as a positive ideology, it has merits, or it can be argued to have merits. Like you, you can be, you, you can, 
there, there, there are ways to be an intelligent liberal or even a liberal realist. That's to do with your what, what you prefer as the ideal outcome for a community. And there's vicious elements to that too, but that's beside the point. That's a separate conversation. Um, this rests on the notion that Rose Wrist's opponents are just dumber than him. They're actually very smart. They're actually considerably smarter than Rose is because they're playing a smarter game that actually puts what they want first. Not the fact that they're right. In fact, it's actually better for you to be wrong if you're going to argue in this way in an unconvincing way, because at the very least then, you're not acting to the disadvantage of, of the right answer to a problem. Um, they're engaging very cleverly, very cleverly, uh, to, to the advantage of their positions. They aren't trying to look smart. Not all of them are anyways. The smartest ones aren't trying to look smart. The smartest ones actually are very careful to look stupid, to allow themselves to look stupid and ordinary because that creates rapport with your audience. People don't, people don't feel offended by your pretentiousness. See, I'm, I'm actually stupid that way. I have a lot of trouble not sounding pretentious and people hate me for it. Um, same with Rose Wrist, I think. And I don't hold that against him. That's, that's like a, it's a thing, but Rose, we are not smarter than them. Got to get over that. Um, they can be, they can be really stupid historically. They can be really, really, uh, uneducated and arrogant in how they deal with academic matters. That does not make them dumb. And it doesn't mean they aren't aware of their own ignorance. They're playing a different game. Receptives undermine this because they believe that with the rise of sexual promiscuity, Hake is the most honest one. And that's because he's stupid. I think Hake actually tries to disguise the fact that he's stupid <laughs> to a certain extent. Um, Hake, Hake is, Hake is in another league. Okay. That contraceptives allow for that leads to less people forming conventional nuclear families and therefore an erosion of family values as a whole. And because they think family values as a whole is really important and they think that uh, contraceptives erodes that from their perspective, they'd be like, wow, if I were to be pro contraception, I would hate people. I would want people to be miserable because I would be against family values. However, then when that person characterizes your position and says, oh, you are in, uh, you're against contraceptives because you're an evil person who wants people to be miserable, you will never, ever, ever connect with that person a single time. Because once you've made fun such a fundamental prescription or description, sorry, of their mindset and of their motivations, they will not want to listen to you anymore. So you are doing so this very moment. You are broadcasting that you think they're just mindless animals who are only reactive to what you say. They're not. They have their own ends. They have their own thoughts and feelings and preferences. Those are what is contrary to yours. That's why they don't have any of the uh, interest to actually learning about these other things because that's, that's of no value to them. They want that whole sphere gone. They, and crucially, not because they're stupid, Maybe also because some of them are stupid, but more to the point, they want it gone. This is a choice. It's it's motivated by aesthetics and upbringing and, and associations and stuff like that. For the same reason that you don't want it gone, because you actually value different things. Two ways to do this conversation. So there's the one I mentioned previously. Oh, you're evil. You want people to suffer. You hate insert X group. That's why you're in favor of this. That person, most likely, once again, there are some crazy, like legitimately psychopathic people up there, but they're an extreme minority. No, they're not. Um, they most I would actually argue in a lot of cases, especially in this venue, a lot of us are involved specifically because we hate people and we like to see them be taken apart. That's why things like fail compilations are, are, are highly lucrative because people love watching people that they have contempt for or that they can have contempt for be harmed. They enjoy that. That's why drama content sells. That's why Keffels has so much attention. When people like normal people can be massively motivated by hatred. And with the ease with which you can uh, access this material now online, did I just pull something off my face? Um, that stuff is, is just, 
It's everywhere. You may spend the majority of your day on a day off just looking at that. Most likely don't think that. They don't think that about themselves. They don't think that that's what their values are. So when they hear you say that you are a fundamentally corrupt and disgusting person who is motivated towards your beliefs by a hatred of other people, they're not going to listen to you because you fundamentally maligned their character to such a gross extent. The other way you could have the conversation is to be like, okay, so let me understand how given that I think, and I think that's, this is a reasonable belief to have, that most people see themselves as good people. Most people think that what they believe in will lead to... That's not true. That's A lot of people see themselves as bad people. In fact, a lot of people see themselves as bad people and then think that nonetheless, they can deploy their badness to the sake of good ends. So it's not about actually saving their souls, so to speak. Um, people sometimes feel very clever when they do really, really bad and hostile things. And they'll rationalize, rationalize it to themselves because they aren't really interested in being good people. They're interested in being effective people or being on the right side. Or we have a, we have a glamour about being willing to get your hands dirty to do the right thing. Doesn't make you a good person, though. There's that whole thing from, uh, like, you, you know in uh, the, the Serenity movie, the Firefly movie called Serenity? Um, there's that, that scene where Mal is talking to the operative. Can't remember that actor's name or how to pronounce it for the life of me, but he's really good. Um, but he's like, so you're killing all these people so you can live in your perfect world? He's like, I don't want to live there. I'm a monster. I do evil because it has to be done. A lot of people have that mentality. It, and it's profoundly pretentious, but like, that's a thing. The greatest amount of happiness. And Hell, a, a lot of conservatives, for example, are highly religious, and they presume as a as a as a as a starting point that human beings are sinful and inherently evil. Therefore, it's not out of the ordinary when you act in those ways, because that's the nature of the world. Um, you, you see, you see, like genuine psychopaths, like uh, like that Darth Dawkins weirdo. Um, guarantee you, like, when th these people go on and their entire shtick is they're just abusive to people who they believe, who, who are, who avow anything that even smells of being contrary to, um, whatever brand of conservative Christian beliefs they have. They justify this because they're, quote unquote, loving their neighbor by putting the salvation of their interlocutor or of the audience of their interlocutor before the well-being of the person they're talking to or before um general human decency or whatever people to do well in society for people to be happy and stuff like that i think there are very few people who, who don't believe in that um so given that you you know you want what's best for people why do you think being against contraceptives is a good idea and then you've actually come to a good discussion, right? Because now you haven't inferred what their motives are in a way that doesn't align with the way that they reflect on their motives. So to Okay, but maybe the goal shouldn't be to have good discussions with people of that sort in public. People don't generally learn that way from those discussions. There's a reason why almost none of these discussions actually terminate with the losing side changing their mind. And it's because the stakes were never really um, the positions that either party hold. The stake was the optics of the position that either party hold. And if they lose, they'll be like, I was unprepared. I was I was on the back foot. Realistically, we're not going to canvas all the relevant data in this two hour so long conversation. Back to the drawing board or I'm going to retire and let smarter people do this. And I'm going to cozily sit exactly where I was before this. Nobody gets convinced by these discussions. There's a reason why when you actually look at groups that are concerned with actually convincing people to join, arguing with you is almost never a factor. With one exception, that's Christian apologetics because they're stupid. But, and they're, they're doing exactly what Rose is doing, by the way. They're concerned with arguing with um, atheists online. They typically look very foolish and very obnoxious, but they look very smart to themselves. And it's, it's just a whole masturbatory thing. Mormons have guides, um, or they used to have guides, I don't know if they still publish these, I'm sure they do, talking about how to evangelize to your neighbors. Don't tell them about being a Mormon. Uh, show up, show an interest in their in their family life, in their, in their hobbies and what have you. Dress well, look well off and happy, make sure that your life is all together. 
make them envy you and make them want to be around you and curious about what is what is making your life so good and slowly induct them that way. Um, most people change sides because they're slowly acclimated by their environment to prefer the things they used to be against. Argumentation has almost nothing to do with it. If anything, it's antithetical to it. It creates bad blood. You, your, your pride is offended when you lose an argument and you develop then an emotional need to defeat your opponent to save your pride, regardless of the truth of the, of the matter at hand. This person now, what you're coming off as and the conversation you're effectively having is just like, okay, I'm not denigrating your entire personhood. I'm just asking why you think that this is a good thing for society at large and why you think this is beneficial. And there you can actually have a conversation because if you first misalign their intentions and then do this, they're already lost. They're not going to listen to you. But if you talk about, okay, so why do you think that being against contraceptives lead to, to, to bad, you know, like outcomes in society? Why do you think it makes people less happy? Then you can actually have a conversation and then, you know, hopefully, I mean, given my set of values, you'd be able to convince them and, and change their mind a little bit. But if you fundamentally start at you're an evil person, you, you know, you hate people, which I understand why you might give that prescription to people, because that's how you think you would have to think, given your knowledge and your understanding of the topic in order to be a favor of their policy. Um, yeah, if you do that, it's fucked. It's over, essentially. So just keep in mind that most of the time, when there is an incongruence between you and another person in terms of the political values you have or the social values you have, it's not because fundamentally you're a good hearted person and the other person is evil. The main reason oftentimes is that people believe that for right or for wrong. Okay. So that the first part of that is true. It's not because they're evil. In fact, you can be extremely evil and have all the right opinions and also be extremely bad at arguing for them or even know nothing about them and just have them incidentally. Like you could, you could be completely, what's the term, morally lucky and you could have all the right opinions and still be a horrible person. That what they're doing is the good hearted thing to do, is the moral thing to do, is the thing that's going to make most people happy. They, no, people don't think that way. Nobody actually thinks that way. People like to think that about themselves when they're asked the question. But like, really, you have a whole bunch of extrinsic pressures making you prefer some things and un and not prefer other things. And these also govern your behavior in, in conversation and what policies you push forward. Like one of the issues I have with Keffels is how many people are responding to like some of the, the more obnoxious stuff she does by taking it out against the trans community categorically. When people misgender Keffels in retaliation, that is precisely what they are doing. Now, I have no idea how many of those people actually made that move as a result of that, but they're doing so in response to an individual. Um, the truth of the matter doesn't matter. The, the hatred they feel has, I guess, stronger emotional currency than, than the truth of the matter. And that's what it is. And, uh, the biggest issue you have is then the, the disconnect in how you understand and how you mechanize the ways that these different policies interact with society at large. And then when there's a misunderstanding there, or there's like a, yeah, one person's right and one person's wrong, then you might lead to different outcomes. But the reason you got led to different outcomes is not because of a, a break in like fundamental basic values that most people would be offended if you said they didn't have. It's just because the way that you understand society and what makes people happy are different but that's the important thing okay when you discuss with people who disagree with you once again for the vast majority of people there are some people who just genuinely just they, they, they just hate people they're an extreme minority though why you can't just say that what on what basis what is the basis for saying this why do you think so why they're, they're a small minority so when you talk to most people and they disagree with you how could you possibly ascertain that Like the evidence that I see seems to suggest otherwise. We love watching people get hurt. We especially love watching people we hate get hurt. Um, you bounce between Vosh's community and Destiny's community. Their content is at least 50% just that. Just watching them make uh, or facilitate rather people with bad political positions 
uh, making asses of themselves and destroying their credibility in public. We love this. I love it. You love it. We all like it. Makes us feel good. Don't immediately go to, oh, I'm just an empathetic, good-hearted person. You're just, like, evil. You're just corrupt. Because you will never, ever, 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 ever bridge that gap. That conversation is gone. That person will never, ever listen to you again. Except for in extremely rare circumstances. That's not true. What might actually happen, is if that happens enough, is they may be in a situation where they have to go, okay, I need to be pragmatic about this. I need to keep certain of these positions close to the chest or figure out a way to communicate myself because the disadvantage is on my end if I continue like this. So what happened with me. I had to pragmatically engage with people because I was in the anti-SJW anti crowd when I was younger, when I was around Rose's age, in fact. Um, and I was like, okay, I need to... Uh, I need to figure out how to communicate because I can't just air my opinions vocally. I just get shut down. And to do that, I had to educate myself. I had to learn the lingo. Da, 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 da. Again, there's a reason why most uh, strategists in in like Chinese philosophy were were failures, because you didn't you didn't write, you didn't do that kind of work unless you had already failed. If you if you got everything you wanted, you didn't have to write. That only gives the advantage to somebody else down the line or or adjacent to you. Um, but as a result of this, I had to educate myself and I realized, wait a minute, hang on. My positions don't actually make sense in the light of the actual data that's here. So I ended up educating myself into better positions as a direct consequence of being shut down. It's not going to work for everybody. Of course it doesn't, but that's, that's how that happens. Um, and because we live in a democracy where we need to connect to our fellow citizen, to the, you know, our coworkers, to our, you know, co-students, is that a thing? Co-students to, to our, to our classmates. That's a better way to say it. Um, to the people that we attend sports clubs with, uh, we need to understand this because otherwise we're never going to meet each other. Otherwise we're going to talk past each other. Otherwise we're going to keep being polarized. Otherwise our democratic uh, democratic uh, process isn't going to function in the way that we would like it to th function and we're all going to be worse off essentially so be very careful with ascribing motives to people because most of the time it's not a disconnect in motives it's a disconnect in understanding and why do you think so why do you think so most of the time it's a disconnect in understanding are you just that smart, Rose? You can just tell that at sight? Like, why do you think so? Mechanization. That's what it really is. And it's important to understand that. The main issue with this position is that when the right is describing the left as evil, it tends to be electorally efficacious. Yet from the left to right, this is the same done. But we don't want to do what the right wing is doing. If it, if, in terms of winning, yes, you very much do. You really want to do what the right wing is doing there. You don't want to be doing it to the same ends that they're doing it, but you 100% want to be winning. If they're doing something that's effective, yes. Yes, you do. We want to prove them wrong. To who? So, so what does it matter if you prove them wrong if you lose? Like, do, do you get extra chicken at the table in Valhalla? Is that how that works? Like, what? what is... God's not going to reward you for being right if you lose. We don't want to we don't want to keep polarizing ourselves. We don't want to keep distancing ourselves. We don't want to start tearing at the seams of a democracy. Just because one side is doing something that is deeply accelerationist and that is undermining all of the like institutions and the core ten Okay, not necessarily accelerationist part, but like if 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 indeed the right wing is is being effective, then you want to take that seriously. Exactly, Daedalus. Never attribute to ignorance what could be ascribed to malice. But in all seriousness, like, y you should, like, a as a general rule, try to stay humble and not make assumptions that you're not in a position to make about some other party. But if you have adequate reasons to that you feel in your gut should motivate, like, a certain kind of guardedness, or to hold certain things in suspicion, you, you should follow that to a certain extent. Um, like, dogmatically attributing 
all disagreements to ignorance just because plausibly you can't construe it that way is stupid. Congratulations, you're now the fool of literally everyone who has an, any, any level of, of awareness of the existence of other minds in the room. Independence of democracy. And in some cases, it's, it's effective. No, dying a hero isn't dumb, but you have to die if you're going to do that. Like, you want to be a martyr? Great. You got to die if you're a martyr. If you're just doing unefficacious politics. Inefficacious? Unefficacious? If you're just doing ineffective politics, um, facilitating the success of your enemies as a result, where the only benefit is the growth of your own platform, you're not, you're not a hero. Uh, you are a, a two-bit grifter in denial. That doesn't mean that the right thing to do or the good thing to do is to do the same thing back. Make it harder for them to do that. Because, hey, you know what? Here's the thing, okay? Mm. A lot of people can be brought to believe some crazy shit from media. Absolutely. Like, for example, the idea that everyone who disagrees with you is just too dumb to understand the truth. Or at least the majority of them are. They're not. Conservatives are smart. A lot of them are very smart. Not academically smart. They don't generally don't spend a lot of their time. There are exceptions, but they generally don't spend a lot of their time, you know, like studying social science or even science at all. But they're smart. In fact, a lot of them do study science. A lot of them go straight into STEM if they go to university. But if they're confronted with somebody in person, and, and this is something I know Destiny's talked about, it is incredibly difficult for you to, to form your belief on a set of people. By the way, I should clarify, what I'm talking about here is specifically with respect to conversations in public. If we're talking about like in a quiet room, like over coffee, you're having a chat with somebody and you have disagreements. Sure. Like I agree with Rose entirely, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about political discourse in front of an audience. More from what you're told about them in the media than what you see in your everyday interactions with them. So, for example, there are rhetorically smart President Sunday. Yeah, but you have to be actually quite smart to be rhetorically smart. Like that's actually a real kind of intelligence um, that you need to you need to respect, not morally respect, but like you know, you have to give the devil his due. The devil is old. Be old if you would uh, understand him. Example: If you have, if you have, if you have a a, a a society in which media tells you X group of people are horrible. But then the ex people, group of people you meet in real life, they're actually really chill and they understand you and they don't call you fucking evil or whatever. What's going to have more of an impact on that person? It's going to be the real life situation. Other way as well. If you have media saying, oh, these people hey, are. If people are chill, by the way, like go back to the Mormon example that I brought up. Uh, they may be playing that game back at you. They may have the wherewithal to start toning themselves down to the end of getting a wedge in on your side or with people adjacent to you. Well, excellent, but every time you fucking talk to them in real life, they're pieces of shit. The, the real life thing is always going to weigh more heavily, right? But, but once again, obviously this conflicts with things like segregation and stuff like that. But this specific belief was about when you are in a... Like, when I say segregation, I don't mean like, you have to live there, you have to be there, but just that... Republicans will tend to live with Republicans. Democrats will tend to live with Democrats. But like, what my <clears throat> prescription is specifically about when there is a connection there, when there is a meeting there. As I agree with the concept that calling people who are just ignorant or blind to evil would push them away. I also used to think this is a bad strategy, but seeing conservatives all over the West talk and behave changed my mind. How many fucking conservatives do you talk? I, I, have, a, I have a really hard time believing. I'm Hang on, I, I want to hear this again. As I agree with the concept that calling people who are just ignorant or blind to evil would push them away. I also used to think this is a bad strategy, but seeing conservatives all over the West talk and behave changed my mind. How many fucking conservatives do you talk? I, I, have, a, I have a really hard time believing. I'm sorry. This is uh, something that I can never prove. Most of my social circle growing up has been conservative, and I was a conservative, a very politically uh, minded one for a very long time. Um... I, I am not convinced by this at all. And this is this might be a, a thing where I instantly lose all your trust forever. But I have a hard time believing you you regularly interact with conservative people. But seeing conservatives all over the world. Okay, but you don't regularly interact with conservative people, Rose. I, I would I would bet. I would bet that generally your only interactions with them are online. 
Um, and, and literally all you do is go, well, if I'm a normal person and I have, I have no opinions outside of the internet, what would cause me to have bad opinions on the internet? Well, obviously it's going to be the influence of stuff I find on the internet. I just, I just, by sheer chance, ran into the wrong stuff. The West talk and behave changed my mind. Most people who believe these things don't believe them because they've been brainwashed. They believe it because they already feel like it's correct, because conservatism is inherently a hateful ideology. Your sentence makes no sense. Most people who believe these things don't believe them because they've been brainwashed. They believe it because they already feel like it's correct. You can be brainwashed into thinking that something is correct. Which includes, incidentally, the notion that your opposition is just dumber than you. That doesn't make any sense. Your sentence does not make sense. There's Maybe my no advice sense. actually doesn't work at all, because most people here who watches are terminally online and don't talk to people in real life anyway, so. <laughs> that being said, you can't just break people's deep level by having a conversation with people. Yeah, of course. Uh, but the thing is, what you can do, though, you can't you can't change people's deep level belief by one conversation, uh, but you can make sure that person never, ever listens to you again in one conversation. The status quo is being conservative to be honest, being ignorant is what's being conservative is all about. Yeah, true. Like, yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, Benick. When we talk about this as leftists, is how a lot of the standard quo is holding a lot of conservative positions, right? A lot of the status quo is believing or like being being ignorant to a lot of the, the perils that exist that we can identify sociologically or otherwise. And that, like, not noticing them and therefore not caring for them and having policies that don't address those, we generally see as conservatism. So does that mean then, if that's like the average person, the average apolitical person, is that, is that them being evil then? Like, of course not, we wouldn't say that, right? Uh, it's, it's just more ignorant. I think that's a good point, Sparkies. What is there even to say? Max Confessor says, I have a lot of right-wing Christian friends and priests who are nice slash good-hearted. I also have friends who are more libertarian paleo paleocon, but the point is that IRL, there are two sorts, those who... Oh, it's a two-parter. Now we wait. Concede things and admit not knowing X, Y, and Z, and those who don't. Yeah. I think calling Rose an idiot Sunday was too nice. Rose isn't substantially an idiot. Uh, Rose is rendered an idiot by his too easily earned um, perception of being a well-informed individual, because he's, he's fundamentally not. He's aggregated a lot of data points that are useful for inserting yourself into debates with right-wing people. He's not good at them because he makes his side look really bad and he does not have the wherewithal to understand how. I don't know. The problem is once you get once you get some success with this, you don't grow as a result because you got what you came for and you've been rewarded for what you've already done. Why would you change it? He's also a child. He's not a child. He's what, 17, 18? He's, he's a grown-up. I'm sorry. Look, if he's if he's old enough to take part in these fights, then he's someone who takes part in these in these uh, in these contentions. Okay, as soon as you're as soon as you're the person who debates with Mark Collette, doesn't matter how young you are. Really, he, he's not he's not fourteen. He's not thirteen. He's seventeen slash eighteen. Okay. I knew better at 17 slash 18. Most people do. The reason he's given so much leeway is because he's very young and people think it's impressive. He's just like Mouthy Infidel. He's going to be just like Dylan Burns in a few years. It's going to stop being cute. Here's the thing, right? Um, I, I do see people saying, like, be more generous with Rose Risk because he's younger. It is not kind to be generous with Rose Wrist because he is younger. 
The reason why he is like this is because he has been rewarded for what he has done up to now. You want to be kind to him? Uh, give him incentive to get better. But no, he's not stupid. He's not stupid at all. That's why it's frustrating. What he is is someone who shouldn't be in this position. This is this is bad for him. It's bad for his audience. <laughs> 